This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Agatavach, everyone. I want to share with you a very important thought that we should seriously consider in Parshas Vayera. We read the Shabbos, the negotiations of Avram Avinu with the Rebani Shalolam, where Avram Avinu is uh, bargaining to, for Hashem to save the city of Sodom. And Avram Avinu tells the Rebani Shalolam, Perak Yerches, Pasuk Chavdalet, Ula Yesh Chamishim Tzadikim Mesoy Chayer. Perhaps there are 50 tzaddikim in the city. Ha'av tispe, will you wipe away v'leisisa la'makoim and not beer the place l'man chamishim ha'tzaddikim asher b'kerba. If you look carefully at this pasuk, there is a word which is extra. There is a superfluous word. Avram Avinu says, Ula yesh chamishim tzaddikim besoich ha'ir in middle of the city. What's Avram Avinu saying the word besoich? Say, Ula yesh chamishim tzaddikim be'ir. Do I care? It's b'tsoi ha'ir, b'ktsei ha'ir, middle of the city, on the edge of the city, near the city. As long as there are 50 tzaddikim in the city, of what relevance is the word b'tsoi? I want to share with you the answer that is found in the Sefer Amude Arazim, written by the Mekobo Rabbi Shaya Asher Zelig Margolis, who brings down that he heard from the Admir Atiko Kadisha Rabbeinu Shloim Eliezer Alfandri, who said in the name of Rav Yaakov Kuli, now, before I tell you what the answer is, let me just share with you the following. So this past Sunday night, I was speaking in Golders Green, and I finished uh, the venue. They asked me to speak uh, about motherhood, a topic that I know nothing about. But Baruch Hashem, it went very well, and I'm coming out, on, I'm on Golders Green Road, and I'm walking down the street, and someone stops me, and he says, Rabbi Gladstein, I've been meaning to ask you this question for a long time, I don't know the guy from uh, Hole in the Wall. Shalom Aleichem, how are you? He says, Rabbi Gladstein, I need to ask you, you know, I just feel like something is uh, missing in my life. And, and I'm a good man, I'm a, I'm, a good, I'm a good guy. I do what I have to do. I dive in with a minion three times a day. I learn every day. So at that point, I, and I, I ask him, okay, you learn every day. What do you learn? Are you learning the right things? You know, people ask Rabbanim all kinds of shilas. Often they forget to ask some of the most important questions. What should I learn? I said, do you learn Gemara every day? Said, yeah, I learn Gemara every day. Do you learn Halacha? Learn Halacha. Do you learn Musr? I learn Musr. I do, I do, I follow the Halacha. I raise my family properly. But, you know, I'm looking for a challenge. I'm looking for something a little bit more. I feel a certain lacking. So I asked him the following. Do you teach anybody? He says, do I teach? Look, I'm not a Rebbe. I'm not a Rav. I'm not a Rosh Hashiva. Teaching is not my thing. I said, you know what? Teaching is a madrega that everyone needs to strive for, everybody needs to aim at, and it's a madrega that's really a cut above sometimes where we're at at the current moment, but it's a level that we all need to strive for. The concept of being mezake es harabim. Rav Yitzchel writes in his biographical notes on Rav Yisrael Salanter, that when Rav Yisrael Salanter was in the peak of his his uh, youth, when he was sort of reaching his full potential and he's going out into the world and trying to make a decision what his path in life should be, what will be most favorable in the eyes of Hashem. And at first Rabbi Sol Salanter said, you know, to get closer to the Rebbe Nishalem, often a person has to go into solitude, meditate, focus on Avodah Hashem, to learn, to daven, and to limit interactions with people. This way a person could avoid all kinds of chatam and all kinds of all kinds of uh, mishaps and pitfalls, and perhaps this is the better approach in life to sort of become a re- recluse and to, to be misboinen and mismo- misboided and stay away from society at large. And then Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, upon further analysis, realized, lo yizu hadarach. This is not the way that Hashem desires, especially with someone with ability and capacity and talent as he had, that the Rebbe Hashem wants a person to be out in the world, engaged with people, involved with people's life, for the purpose of being Mizak Es Harabim, bringing merit to the multitude. Because after all, Chassam Soifer writes in his Hakdama to Yaradeya, even if a person would go into seclusion and reach the level of a Malachi Hashares, Rebbe Hashem is not really that interested in a person reaching the level of Malachi Hashares. You know why? Because Rebbe Hashem already has thousands and tens of thousands of Malachi Hasharis. 
What the Rebbe is interested in is a person who could go out and be Mezake Es Harabim. And in sometimes being Mezake Es Harabim means limiting one's own growth and one's own development for the sake of the Tzibor. And I suggested, humbly, that if a person is doing what they need to do, perhaps the next level and the next step that a person needs to take is to go out and to teach and to be Mezake Es Harabim. I'll give you a very beautiful Mara Malka. In the Gemara in Masech Debar Metziah says in Naf Pehe, the Reb Chia said, don't start up with me. I would ensure the Torah would never be forgotten. I would take five young boys, teach them Chami Shechem I would take six young men, teach them Shishay Sidre Mishnah, but teach one boy Bereshus, one boy Shemois, one boy Vayikra, one boy Bamidbar, one boy Devarim, one boy Zeram, one boy Moed, one boy Nashim, one boy Nazikim, and then have them teach it to each other. So the Marsha asks, you know, why doesn't he just teach all the 11 boys? Chamesheh Chamesheh Taira, or Shishesh Sidrei Mishnah, or even better, teach one boy Kala Kula, and then let him teach it to Kala Yisrael. Says the Marsha, what Reb Chiyo was aiming at was to elevate his Talmidim, not just to the level of a Loimid, but to the highest Madrega of Taira, and the highest Madrega of Taira is being a Malamid. When a person not only learns, when a person teaches, their Torah knowledge is on a different level. It's coursing through their veins. It's part of their system. When a person has to give a shear, give over, convey to others, that's the highest level of Torah. The highest level of connection to Hashem is giving over to others. Chavis Havavis writes that nobody really knows for sure if they could reach a level and could amass mitzvahs enough to merit Olam Haba. Because after all, everybody has a veroy saying tzaddik ba'aretz ha'shayasa toi v'la The only real guarantee we have to make it to the next world is if we're mazakah es haramim, if we bring merit to the multitude. That is a merit that sort of overcomes any possible mishaps and pitfalls that a person may fall into in this world. Let me share with you now the answer that Rabbi Yaakov Kuli gives to this question of why the Torah HaKadosha says, but to really appreciate this answer, I want to share with you some fascinating, fascinating biographical information about Rabbi Yaakov Kuli. Rabbi Yaakov Kuli was born in the year 1689 to his father, Rabbi Machar Kuli. And Rabbi Yaakov Kuli was the grandson of Rabbi Moshe Ibn Chabib. Rabbi Moshe Ibn Chabib was uh, responsible for two very important works, the Sefer Get Pashot, and the Sefer Ezras Nashim, as well as other Sfarim. But interestingly, these Sfarim were put together by his grandson, Rav Yaakov Kuli. Now, Rav Yaakov Kuli is best known for his Mayam Loes. Maybe you're familiar, in many shuls, they have the English translation of the Mayam Loes of Rabbi Aryeh Kaplan, one of the most brilliant uh, Torah scholars of the 20th century. What's very interesting about the English edition of the Mayam Loes is the Mayam Lois was written originally in Ladino. Ladino is um, to Spanish as Yiddish is to German. Ladino is like a Hebraicized Jewish version of Spanish. And uh, amazingly, Rabbi Arya Kaplan translated the Mayam Lois not from the Hebrew. It wasn't written in Hebrew. It was translated into Hebrew in the 1960s. He translated it from the original Ladino, and Rabbi Arya Kaplan writes that the reason he chose Ladino to translate is he felt the Hebrew was very ambiguous. And incredibly, this genius, Rabbi Arya Kaplan, learned Ladino, and he was able to translate the Mayam Loes into English from Ladino. He writes that at first it was uh, somewhat difficult to understand Ladino, but then words like Judi Jimo in Ladino, he easily was able to recognize that the word Judi Jimo is the Ladino Spanish word for Judaism. And uh, another word of interest is Senior de Limundo, which is Senior, Master de Limundo, Master of the Universe. Well, um, one looks at the Mayam Loes and one wonders about the scholarship of Rabbi Yaakov Kuli. It seems to be a work of a collection of Midrashim and some light halachos and agadata. And one would then think maybe Rabbi Yaakov Kuli was um, a scholar of, of the Agada, a scholar of the Midrashim, but we don't necessarily have uh, an insight into his level of scholarship into the more complex uh, areas of Torah, Halacha, 
and Pilpal, but incredibly, I was not aware that Rev. Yaakov Kuli was actually one of the great disciples of one of the all-time great Svardik Rabbanim, Rabbi Yehuda Rosenes, who lived from 1658-1727. Rabbi Yehuda Rosenes is the Mechaber of the Mishnah Lamelech and the Parshas Drachim. That's what we all know. What is not as well known is that Rabbi Yehuda Rosenes passed away on the Chof Nisan 1727. And during the Avelos, his house was looted. And the manuscripts of Mishnah Lamelech on the Rambam and Parshas Drachim were stolen. Rav Yaakov Kuli was the one who pieced together fragments of Parshish Drachim and Mishnah Lamelech. Even if you look in the Mishnah Lamelech, you'll notice that there are Hagois in the Mishnah Lamelech. These footnotes were written by Rav Yaakov Kuli himself. He's the one who pieced together the fragments of the Mishnah Lamelech, one of the great commentaries on the Rambam, Parshish Drachim, one of the most complex farm ever written on the Chumash. For an individual to piece together such works, it obviously requires Torah scholarship of the highest level. Clearly, he was an all-time giant Talmud Chacham, an all-time giant going and learning in Pilpo, Mishnah Melech on the Rambam, one of the most complex Perushim on the Rambam. Clearly, we're dealing with one of the Goine Oilam, someone who, when it came time to write his life's work, surely could have written something of a more complex nature. And it then is a wonderment why Rabbi Yaakov Kuli would write a work like Mayam Loes. It seems to be something for the masses, something for the unlearned perhaps, but not something of the highest level of Torah scholarship. And it's, it's somewhat of an enigma. Until we realize, if you look in the Shem Hagadolim of Achida, on the Sefer Ezras Noshim, who, which was from Rav Moshe ben Chaviv, the grandfather of Rav Yaakov Kuli. Rav, the Chida gives us some insight into the motivation of Rav Yaakov Kuli into writing these Svarim. And he writes, V'shamati mikedushas v'chasidus Rav Yaakov Kuli. I heard about the sanctity and piety of Rav Yaakov Kuli and his, his diligence in Torah. I saw the Svarim that he published from his Rebbe, Rabbi Huda Rosinus, um, the author of the Mishnah Lamelech, how he put together Mishnah Lamelech, he put together Parshas Drachim, how he put together his grandfather's work, Ged Pashot. But then, says the Chida, V'hi karti toikif pa'ulas tzadik. I saw, I recognized the power of the actions of the tzadik, Rabbi Yaakov Kuli. Hafla v'fele! Ki haya soifer, he was a writer, Mahir Ubaki, wrote hastily, and he wrote with proficiency on Shas and Poiskim, like you see in the Sefer Me'am Loyes. Do you know why he wrote the Me'am Loyes? Asher Chiber Lezakos Es Arabim. He wrote the Me'am Loyes to be Mezak the Rabbim. Says the Chida, you know what I say about him? Ashrav, fortunate is he. Va'ashrei Chelkoi, fortunate is his portion in life. Surely he could have wrote works of maybe higher scholarship, but he gave up his maybe prestige and fame to bring the multitude for righteousness. Like Rabbi Yisrael Salanter, he understood what the Rebbe Hashem wants in this world is greater than somebody elevating himself, the highest madrega is being Mazakis Harabim. And in fact, I just saw this evening in the Hakdama, the Mayam Loyes, Rev, <coughs> Rabbi Yaakov Kuli himself says, you may wonder why I didn't write works of greater scholarship. He says, I wrote it to be Mazakis Harabim. And therefore, this pshat that I'm about to share with you Roy Lamisha Amram is so fitting to the one who says it. Says Rabbi Yaakov Kuli, Avram Avinu understood that even if they're tzaddikim in Sadaim, but if they're tzaddikim in their own Dalet Amos, focused on their own Avodas Hashem, focused on their own growth, they will not save the city because that is not sufficient merit for the Yibam Shalom to, pre- to protect the cities. However, maybe we could find 50 tzaddikim who are integrated with the city and connected to people and who can have an influence on people and elevate people and be mazakis harabim. Because when you have tzaddikim that could elevate other people, then that is somewhat of a, of a protection. Then we could anticipate and hope that maybe, maybe one day the people will turn around since we have people who are interested in elevating them and bringing about their spiritual welfare. Who better than Rabbi Yaakov Kuli himself could appreciate the value of being Mazakis Arabim, could say, 
this beautiful insight, someone who dedicated his energies, he was able to complete the commentary of Mayam Loyes on the entirety of Sefer Bereshis. He was able to complete it on the majority of Sefer Shemais, more than 1,100 printed pages, and unfortunately he passed away at the age of 42 in the year 1732. Zechusai Yagen Aleinu, and not only the Zechus of a tzaddik and a tamachacham, but the Zechus of someone that the Chida calls Mezakes Harabim, Ashrei Chelkoi, the Ashrei Klal Yisrael, that we have a tzaddik who could be megan on us, like Rabbi Yaakov Kuli, a tzaddik who is Besoich Klal Yisrael, a tzaddik of who is Besoich Ha'ir, Zechus Ha'yagen Aleinu, Amen. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.